Uh, my name's Mookie, or Mark, if you prefer, from uh, the SoCal Sound, listener-supported public radio right here in Southern California. We got some live music in our studio from an amazing band, Vintage Trouble. Uh, I will t tell you, uh, they might, might be up for some Grammys this year in uh, some of the blues categories, uh, as well as Americana and R&B. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit later in the interview we're about to do, uh, I believe that this band deserves all the awards. So without further ado, it's Vintage Trouble on the SoCal Sound. No halo over my head to the bone till death I'm a 
Awesome. Uh, you guys just heard a, a cool live version of uh, Low Down Dirty Dog. That would be Vintage Trouble. It's amazing to have you guys back in studio. It really does feel amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was telling you off the air that um, you guys have been here when we were just KCSN and then the independent 88.5 FM. Now we are the SoCal Sound. Yeah, you are. And uh, post-pandemic, I yeah. guess, if we could call it that, to have you guys come back and to join us today for some live music is Thank amazing. You. Yeah. So, it's so well, right? The whole concept when people say post-pandemic, when we're still kind of, I mean, I was in some place the other day that was so tight and sweaty and no yeah. one had on masks and we were, and I was like, well, <laughs> and I haven't had COVID yet. So I was like, well, yeah. if I get it, it's happening today. Yeah. <laughs> but like, cause, you, cause everyone thinks post-pandemic yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are semi back to normal. It seems like just got off a, a, a huge UK tour. European, European, uh, uh, European. Yeah. You didn't go to UK. Every, yeah. Yeah. Which, UK. Isn't, yeah. which isn't in yeah. Europe anymore. I mean, it is, but it, you know, they just associate. <laughs> UK made it really hard now with this Brexit thing to uh, to usually when you go to Europe, you do the whole thing together. But yeah. Now mm -hmm. it's all it's separate. Really messy. <laughs> we had we did have a blast and. And Europe was beautiful. It was our first time going back out on the road since um, since the beginning of the pandemic. And, you know, there were so many elements that we tried to, to keep under wraps. Like, you know, part of the, especially my stage performance has to do with including the audience as part of our show. And even like I spend half my show either jumping an audience, jumping on top of the audience, having them jump on top of me, French kissing, whatever. And so, like, I told myself going back that I wasn't going to do any of that. But then you get in front of the people and you have no oh, yeah. choice. So I would, put on a, I would put on a mask and then dive onto the crowd. Stay, stay. But I had to. I, you just, you know, we were so held back that we needed to get to the people. And then once you were there, you couldn't help but get as close as you could get. Yeah. You know, we're, like, playing shows on beaches in Spain and... And, and stuff like this, and, every, and the audience is loving up on each other, and it almost feels unfair that, you know, as the band, you can't love up on people that came to see you. Yeah. Because, again, people travel so far. Um, you know, we were in, um, we were in certain, certain places where, we, since we didn't go to the UK this time, our fans would all get together, they would come to Sweden or something like this. And the last thing you're gonna do is not hug. You know, yeah, you yeah. Know, you try, we tried, you know, but it, it, you couldn't help it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know the audience is thirsty for that stuff now. And uh, I've been telling people that there's no stage, you know, Ty's never met a stage uh, that he wouldn't, you know, dive off of <laughs> type of thing. You guys have played small venues and the biggest venues in the world, practically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Right. You guys were pretty innovative during the pandemic as well. I, I do want to talk about some of that stuff, but you know, the, the latest album, which just recently released, I guess you could say, is uh, Juke Joint Jams. Juke Joint uh, Gems. Gems. Gems, excuse like, me. Like a treasure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have it written here, Gems. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I just can't read my chicken It's your Boston accent, right? Juke Joint Gems. Juke Joint, we could have called it Juke Joint Gym Jams. Yeah, Juke Jams. Jock Jams? Jock Jams. Just Jockey Jams. Oh, just Jock DJ Jams. Think about that for the next one, I guess. Um, but is this a more or less a, a pandemic-inspired project? Um, I know that you have uh, what your, your fan base you call the troublemakers, and uh, you know you did a great job of engaging them mm -hmm. while there were no live shows happening. Yeah. Um, we know you guys did the uh, the Pershing Square sort of at-home concert series, which mm -hmm. I just rewatched the other day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in conjunction yeah, with our friends at um, you know the city of Los mm -hmm. Angeles, yeah. very very cool. That was so much fun. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and uh, if people do enough digging they could find that performance on the internet so from what i've been told you know some of the previously unreleased vintage trouble tracks and maybe reworked demos made its way into this latest album could you yeah. talk about that just a little bit you know, that's, yeah that's that's what this was we were home and we wanted to get music to our fans and they were a lot of our fans a lot of their favorite songs are some songs that have never made it to albums you know to be released and they are the heart and soul of our band. A lot of these songs on Juke Joint Gems there, they represent um, our first journals as a band. Mm. You know, oh, every song on this album, whenever we play it or whenever um, we hear it on the radio or, or being played back to us, 
I can see pictures of us figuring out what to do as a band. I remember the, the early venues. I remember our first troublemakers. I remember our first writing sessions. I remember the first time that we were in Studio R, which is um, behind Richard's house where we were creating all of our music. It, it's almost as if it was, um, I don't know, it's, it, it, it's definitely a collection of sounds that represent the beginning of our band. Mm. And it's been really nice to to rediscover a couple of them and, and tweak them the way we would do them now. Or some of them were songs that we tried to do for albums that we didn't <clears throat> quite get right. And then it allowed us to try and figure out that. Maybe we did, but we didn't, who knows. But we at least had, had the gumption to get into the studio and, and fix these. And it was pandemic, like it still is right now, but it was pandemic, so we were in separate studios. Wow. We had to figure out how to make music during that time. So we were each in our own place. We had got our home studios set up. So we would just send the parts around to each other, drums first, and then we would just layer them. And we would get a couple of these records we wanted to tweak. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we wanted to add some of the feeling of this time on old songs. And it's been a really nice, Time, especially the summer tour we did, it was a Juke Joint Gems tour. Yeah. So we got to tour a lot of the songs that we'd stopped playing for eight years. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was like not only reconnecting with new fans, but it was like reconnecting with new friends, these songs. Mm -hmm. What was the first gig back um, after a long hiatus? And how good did you guys feel to, I imagine, just to come alive on stage again? I mean, so you know, I mean, it was that one gig that we did before the whole Blues Festival. Yeah, we went Paul to and Netherlands. Blues yeah. yeah, yeah, and Paul and Blues Festival. Yeah. That but was the first one for real. Do you find that audiences overseas are different than audiences here in the United States? Or a music fan is a music fan? No, yeah. it's, it's part of their culture a little more. You yeah. know, in the United States. Um, we kind of, you know, you go to concerts every once in a while. There are a few people. You know, sometimes you get your your jam band fans that will, they will go to concerts twenty times a month. Yeah. But over overseas, you grow up with 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 music and music festivals being ingrained in your life, almost like going to the movies. So it's it's a different reception. And for us, you know, we happen to have had more radio success and sales success overseas. Mm. So um, it's almost like our second home. So going back there, uh, our fans were a little hungrier, a little, a little more, they were starving and thirsty for some, some vintage trouble and it made us feel good to be back there. And we haven't been on a plane. Yeah, you know? especially being part of a festival, it's amazing because it's like, right. you know, it's a lot of bands and it's a cool energy and, and if, yeah, just to be back. Mm -hmm. We'll give a shout out to, um, during the pandemic, we, we had the honor of getting called to do a show called If These Walls Could Rock on Access TV. And that was really, it was really at the heart of the pandemic, the first year where nobody was even fucking flying. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, can I cuss? Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Nobody, <laughs> we, we, you couldn't even fly. And I mean, you could, but it was just like sketch, right? You were sure. like, yeah, it was super sketch because you didn't know what was what still. Yes, that was thunder. If you heard it in the yeah. microphone, yeah. thunder. I don't know if the microphones picked that up. I mean, that's got to be like well, a good omen cool. or something. That's, that's a good omen. That's pretty good. unusual for LA. Yeah, yeah. I hope nice. it rains. Yeah. But they, we got called to, uh, and they, they, it was the show that was built around certain venues. And this one particular venue was this tiny church in uh, about an hour outside of Charleston, South Carolina, mm. where the Cane Hoy Riot is. It's called Cane Hoy Riot. Mm. It was the largest interracial sort of riot, uh, you know, especially post reconstruction. Mm. And so we got to, we showed up to this, you know, tiny little church out in the, in the middle of nowhere where there was Union soldiers buried there, Confederate soldiers buried there. Slaves? So, yeah, slaves were buried there. And, and we had to do, and we did this thing where they did this little tiny church and uh, we performed a, an upcoming new song for the next record uh, it was called repeating history but it was it was uh, that was a gig it was a different type of gig and um, it was just you know hair standing up it was so profound such a profound experience well, goosebumps, yeah no, you know, just having you explain it to me and we actually wound up getting nominated for a daytime Emmy for that particular episode for it incredible so, yeah, yeah so so but there's a, it's great if you can get a hold of it. It was Access TV. It's called If These Walls Could Rock, and I think the one we were on was either the first or the last. It was of the first, first of the season, 
and the song, like I said, it's called "Repeating History" for the up for the forthcoming record. Yeah. But um, but uh, yeah, that was that was probably the first time we left our house during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for a gig. That's amazing. Yeah, I, we're talking about Juke Joint Gems, and mm -hmm. you're playing some tracks for us today. You, you kind of alluded to another album coming, so I want to talk about that in just a little <laughs> bit. We're going to get back into the music. It's Vintage Trouble, 24-7, 365, Satisfaction Man. Is Was this a song from 10, 12 years ago? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. 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 We were... Um, when we first got together, again, one of the things that was inspiring us nonstop was Stax Records and the whole history of Stax Records. And 24-7, I mean, anyone's going to hear it and get it. It's got to be inspired mainly by Otis Redding. And I just loved that time period when, when soul music, it was so, it was such, it had such bravour. You came in like, you came in like, like, like a man on a mission, a lot of the soul music back then. And 24-7 feels like that. Thanks. So 24-7, 365 is one of the songs that's on Juke Joint Gems, like all the songs we're playing today. It's to actually called 24-7, 365 Satisfaction, man. And I think it's just, you know, it's kind of got a, an old school prowess to it. Back when um, machismo didn't get you canceled. <laughs> Is that all right to say? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get canceled for saying the machismo? Not get to but I'm going to say it, it's, it's representing a different day. Yeah. I'm going to try to embody it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> different day. It's a different day. It was back, it was back when, 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 yeah. when it was all right to feel like you could satisfy somebody. Yeah. Now we understand it's, it, it takes a world. It takes a world. Darling, darling, baby, darling, leave it 
right, there you go, back into the studio. My name's Mookie, um, you are you, and this is Vintage Trouble here in, uh, I guess, uh, HQ at uh, SoCal Sound headquarters. Um, please know we're a listener-supported public radio station. If you like what we're doing on and off the air, donate if you can through the SoCalSound.org. Yes. Get the t-shirt and uh, some other merch items if, if they're available. Um, no tour dates on the, on the calendar quite yet. However, there's a show coming up in a big festival out in Australia, uh, Blues Fest, Byron Bay. You guys well, that got played? I forgot. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 the yeah. Biggest, it's the biggest festival you can do in Australia. And it's, we've done it many years. And you t we were talking earlier about um, how great festivals are. One that's as big as that really blows your mind. And the people that go to these festivals, not to mention, it's Australia. So the people, it's, 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 it's an overly gorgeous yeah. uh, community of people. Like it almost feels like you're in the movie version of what a music festival looks like, you know, because like Amazing. everyone is just sun kissed mm -hmm. and they've got on like, you feel like you're in an ad for like mm -hmm. whatever the best clothing company you can have. But people rock so hard and the tents are so big. And there's the amount of artists that they're there, you know, like they're like four main stages and you get to be backstage with, with your heroes and you get to yeah. you know, hold hands and drink with like Chrissy Hines and, and everyone from, the, you know, the, the people that you would never <coughs> think you'd be backstage hanging Family out Stone. with. You know, yeah, Family yeah. Stone. Family Stone, Mavis Steve Staples, Crawford, Steve Crawford, Bonnie like you're just, you're just <laughs> Bonnie Raitt. You're just like, you know, a Cade Ray. So I was gonna say, right, like it's, it's the wildest it's thing like ever. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a beautiful festival. It's so amazing. that's coming up soon, uh, early 2023, yeah, I think, yeah. in, in, in April. The Doobie Brothers are going to be out there, and um, mm -hmm. Allison Russell, who we like a lot, mm -hmm. uh, right? She'll be out there as well. Nathaniel Ratliff, St. Paul and the Broken Bones. So uh, if there's any troublemakers out there in Australia, they'll be able yeah. to, to yeah. buy yeah, There'll be festivals. There's some festivals that are happening before that as well, but, but those haven't been confirmed yet. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. And after. Yeah. But I think in Australia we're going to do it. We uh, kind of do a couple of more dates, you know, kind of split it up a little right. bit. Right. Uh, were you saying uh, maybe with Marcus King? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Marcus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's that's already too, yeah. so we yeah. can say now. Yeah. Say that's a pretty good fit. Yeah, um, he's great. Yeah, I'm picking sure. up some Vintage Trouble vibes with uh, a, a band like a Marcus <laughs> yeah, King yeah, band, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so we're talking about this album. Um, Ty, you and I talked about it just a little bit. Um, talking about Pandemic Records. You have a record already done, uh, ready to yeah. go, but uh, mm -hmm. might not see the light of day till uh, sometime in 2023. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that far into 2023. I think it's going to be pretty early in 2023, to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. um, uh, without us being able to tour whatever, we'd recorded a great album almost mainly right before the pandemic started. But without being able to tour it, we knew that it wouldn't get the right energy that it deserved. So that's the album we've been holding off for 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 the for all the gates to be cleared to have a, a full launch into being back on the road, which mm -hmm. is going to happen probably before spring of next year. I mean, the whole idea really is to tour this new album with these new festivals. And okay, it, mm -hmm, we did we did a record. You know, Vintage Trouble is known for for a certain sound. We got together. We wanted to record a lot of live stuff. We wanted to record like our heroes did back in the day. Then after that we experimented with a lot of modern sounds and a lot of modern technology and, and trying to, you know, make music like the kids do. And then this new record we're gonna do feels more like old vintage trouble, right. but um, under, under the rocket fuel of current technology. So it feels more, I think the songs feel more like old vintage trouble songs, yeah. but there's, um, they're, they're, they're painted with a more modern, Interesting. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it's going to be the best. The new album is the best of both worlds. I know it already, and it's already my. The, our new album that's going to be coming out is already my favorite Vintage Trouble album. Right. Incredible. That's yeah. saying a lot. So Mine too. experimenting with others, production. Um, um, we got a producer. We got a producer for, um, that was that was connected to us by someone. He did a lot of producing with like Amy Winehouse and Trouble and Shorty and these kind of people. And he just gave gave us some elements that allowed us to still feel like a soul band. Yes. But um, but make the records sit 
better on radio in between other radio songs. Yeah, what Ronson fair. did with, with Amy with like the Dap Kings and that old sort of the old reverb sound and everything, but it was also the beats were kind of mm. com in combination. They felt like, like they could have came off an MPC, right? Mm -hmm. They were just hitting hard like a hip hop track or like, mm -hmm. a, like, like but they, right. Right, it was Amy and it, so it mm -hmm. felt authentically vintage and modern at the same time. Right, and yeah. uh, that makes perfect sense to me. I, I will say um, that my favorite version of Vintage Trouble is the rootsy sort of sound and the uh, the organic sort of feel that, that we get from you guys. Um, yeah, incredibly active during the pandemic, trying to be innovative and do other things. Um, you still heavily involved with the, the Patreon stuff? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, w uh, what exclusive things could people get if they're a subscriber? Well, we just had a dope happy hour. Right? <coughs> happy For a long hours. time we were doing, you know, Live streams, yeah. Live streams, like religiously, like yeah. so you get really good live streams. We were doing them down at Harvell's in Santa Monica at mm -hmm. first, so mm -hmm. full on, and then we started doing them in my backyard, uh, which became much more intimate and sort of acoustic-y kind of, but was really a good look. And it's a great yeah. library over there, on there. Yeah, it's you like, know, it's you know, we probably have 25, 30 yeah. different live streams during the pandemic. It's a great backyard, by the way. Yeah, it is, it is quite a divine backyard. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding, yeah. Finely curated by his wife. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but we do these happy hours, you know, try to do at least once a month where we get all of our troublemakers together on a Zoom and all call it a happy world. hour, and we just all hang out for a happy hour. And Japanese troublemakers show up at five in the morning, and then, yeah, you know, we're doing it at 1 p.m. our time, which is like 10 o'clock European time, and so we're trying to combine everything all at the same time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, pretty rad. To and say, then there's, bunches, <clears throat> there's a bunch of gems on Patreon that you can't get anywhere. Yeah. That, you know, we have cool to release demos really, of tracks. You know, tracks demos of there. tracks, yeah. you know, this U2 song we did one day. Oh, um, incredible. Just, just ridiculous behind the scenes stuff, and it's just stuff you would never get, you know, and we try to make it very exclusive for Patreon. Mm -hmm. So some really good gems in there. And also that's just assuming that everyone's listening knows what Patreon is. I mean, Patreon's great because it allows your fans to help support the bands. Yeah. And they they um, they almost give monthly like it's a credit card. And it really helped a lot of bands during the pandemic because you weren't getting anywhere. Um, you couldn't do any shows. So it was nice um, that, that people that love what you do, that love your art, stood up for you and said, you know, I'll give a price of five cups of coffee a month to, to see yeah. my band. I feel like Sally Struthers would have yeah. said that. But I mean, <laughs> I felt like, you know, they, they, really, they really helped us and they really lifted us and they gave us a reason to make ourselves come together during the pandemic. Because right. right. we could have easily just said, let's just wait this out, it'll be done. We would have been in four separate guys in four separate homes trying to just stay alive and stay enthused and inspired. But because of our community, on Patreon, it made us as a band um, come together a lot more often than we probably would have without our community. Yeah, yeah, and the, even the model that has kind of moved to, we were like, well, how can we do something like consistently? And that was really kind of, I think, the genesis on how Juke Joint Gems came about because we were like, well, we had these old tracks, so we started doing them once a month. And then we did them for the course of like a year past, and you're like, okay, now you got 12 out, you, are, you basically have a record. And that so was it was available to the Patreon contributors first. First, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. It's great. I know musicians who really take the Patreon thing very seriously, yeah. and, and it gives them a reason to stay active, right? Yeah. Like you said, and um, it's kind of like a public radio station. You donate to mm -hmm. the bands that you like, and uh, yeah. to see you know these bands thrive, and you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in the same way, like you were saying, like there are a lot of companies and radio stations and different things with the pandemic. You, you figured out a way to keep yourself alive and still keep reaching people. A lot of people have not gone back to live shows because they've set up such great things at home where, they're, where, where, they're, where their Patreon community can see them in such a great way, well lit and everything. They're like, why yeah. am I gonna run around yeah. somewhere? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's always, always, you almost get spoiled. Yeah, you're at home, the coffee's good, you right. can wear flip Pajama tops. bottoms, yeah. right. Yeah. It's almost like you were a DJ and you could just stay at home and do the gig, right? Like a concept. <laughs> No, but it was so funny. When we first started doing shows again, like I felt so bad because we were late as far as getting back on the road. And we would do some shows, maybe these festivals, and I feel like all the other lead singers already had their pandemic jokes together that I hadn't had together yeah. yet. You're like, oh yeah, great to be out here with pants on finally doing yeah, some yeah. shows. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh shit, I gotta get my pandemic shit up. <laughs> but then, to me, it's just that, like everybody see like they're setting up these Patreon things and, and it is, we're still running our Patreon pretty high end, you know, like and it's doing great. Uh, I mean, I would still say that, you know, uh, 
nothing compares to a real show for for the audience and for us, you know, when you because we were doing a lot of these live streams and then we're so used to touring and, and being part of the audience with the music. So when you yes. when you end the song and yes. it's just like Okay, yeah. let's do the next one. It's, it's so, so weird. Yeah, so we you know? it's, it's got to be good for the soul mm -hmm. to be yeah. in front of a crowd. Yeah, yeah. You know? but also be an interesting yeah. study because yeah. that's just us. There are some people that don't do as well live, right. and so it'd be an interesting yeah, study to see what kind of. There are probably some artists that have thrived by not having to be. I mean, I'm just curious about that. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I hadn't even really thought about that till just now. There. And just like there are some people who always sound better on record than they do live, and then they've got to deal with that. I'm, I'm wondering what the study is now <laughs> about, like, you know, these people that have become stars during the pandemic, that the last thing they could want yeah. is to get in front of people. Yeah, and you The know, claws might scare them. Uh, <laughs> totally. so, yeah, they take so much time to uh, make their look perfect mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. just to be in front of the lights and their mm -hmm. iPhone. And some people just aren't live performers. Yeah, that's and true. So it might have taken away some of that anxiety away from, you know, you know, there's yeah. some people that just don't nice to be home. I mean, for us it's for us it's great to get back out. Mm -hmm. All right, but let's get into the last song and then we'll come back right. and talk about uh, some of this potential Grammy right. stuff, which is yeah. amazing. Um, tw uh, what are we what are we going to do? Red-handed. Red-handed. That's right. Yeah, red-handed. It's funny too because during the pandemic uh, the two different Aretha Franklin movies came out. You know, there were two different stars, two different stories being told, right? And it reminded me that, you know, when we, were to, when we wrote this song, Red Handed, I, I remember being so inspired by Aretha Franklin at the time. Yeah. And then so, this is one of the ones we got to kind of redo. And I remember coming off, coming off of one of watching one of the movies, and I was like, oh, that little tweak is what we missed in some of the Aretha feel on Red Handed. Ooh. So then to be able to go back and readdress it, pick it apart, and um, re-record the song, um, and actually feel like, to me, like I felt like we, we kind of hit right in the center of, of the vibe of that music for Red Handed. What was always in our heads that, you know, sometimes when you play songs a lot, you can get further away from the, the impetus where it came from originally. Because of these Aretha Franklin movies that we watched during the pandemic, we honed in on Red Handed in a way that made it really feel like an early Muscle Shoals mm -hmm. soul song. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I'm so proud of it. Amazing. Uh, let's get into it now and then more in this studio on the SoCal Sound. Yeah. This is Red Handed. Red Handed is one of those kind of songs that it kind of catches people off guard by its meaning, but everyone knows the feeling. I happen to be going through it right now. It's like when you're in a relationship with someone, you're trying to act like you're cool and you're not in love anymore, and then all of a sudden they catch you making that glance. They look at you and they see you looking back at them and they're like, I caught you. And I caught you still being in love with me. And it's a hard thing to admit sometimes. It's called Red Handed. Chorus is red handed. Still holding on. You call me red handed. Red -handed. I'm still holding on to my love for you. My love for you. Red Tiptoeing over my emotions Like I don't know the truth of it Trying to sneak a glance through the window a chance And trying to leave no trails of clues of it Sometimes I find myself in the places we went Looking for a heartbreak healing But we up underneath the willow tree It's gonna drown my feet the record state, I did the best that I could But if loving you is bad, then I'm no dang good And for the hurt for worse, if I could retract I would take them back just like that You got me red painted I'm still holding on Against 
against the wall, hands behind the back. It's like some kind of cold blooded criminal. Hey, a criminal, your life is fine. Cross the laws, I swear and do the glare. Well, I know now I didn't know when I was there, so I walked away from you. But I came back to make it right. So go on and lock me up, give me a life. song you guys provided for us today but again elephant in the room i want to talk about this um grammy voting is not going on right now but Tomorrow. i believe the grammy preliminary the, to who makes the considerations ballot. considerations going on right, right. Now. so we're talking about and bear with me here i'm looking at my phone best contemporary blues album um we were talking about uh, our buddy fantastic negrito wins every year practically <laughs> we're coming and, for uh, you we're yeah, coming for yeah, you yeah that's right um uh, best traditional blues album uh best americana album and i love how the lines are slow sh so blurred mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. In Americana these yeah. days, you know, yeah. it's interesting. Um, best American Roots performance for a Low Down Dirty Dog, a particular song, and best traditional R&B performance uh, for Red Handed, the song that, that, that uh, you guys just performed. So we know that we have some people on the uh, the Grammy committee, um, yeah, you know, yeah. who listen to this public radio station. Uh, hopefully they're paying attention right now because I believe you guys deserve all the awards. Yeah, it's also great just because <laughs> this is sweet Mookie. Mookie. Without having been able to tour during the time this, the people would be hearing this record, um, as much awareness about it now is 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 is, is uh, we're so thankful for it. Yeah. It's incredible what we're, we're pulling for you. Thank you. And again, uh, it's an open door policy, uh, an open invitation for you guys, no matter what this radio station is called. <laughs> yeah. uh, know, who knows what it's going right, to be the next right, album cycle? Right, yeah. I, I'm well, just kidding. If we make the ballot, let's, yeah. let's say it right now, we'll come back and then we'll do the, 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 the push to try and win one. So yeah. that's what we're trying to do, cool. is making the ballot. Cool. cool. We'll come back. Cool. Um, yeah. Man, we love you guys so much, and uh, we're, we're on board no matter what. Vintage Trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool.